Right then, um, ready? Uh, so, uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm really, really happy to be here. I haven't done anything like it before, so uh, it's all new to me. So please bear with me if I'm uh, uh, not doing something right. Uh, but hopefully you enjoy uh, everything I've got to show you today and you enjoy the whole story of uh, me getting into photography and um, yeah, how it all began. Uh, so my name is Ivona Pinkovic. I'm originally from a small um, town called Przemysl in southern Poland. Uh, I moved to London. Uh, tomorrow it will be 15 years, so I'm a true Londoner now. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a hell of a journey since I moved here. Uh, uh, my sister also lives in London. I got married last year to uh, English slash Welsh men. Um, <laughs> and uh, we live in King's Cross. Uh, we've got a lovely flat there. Uh, and yeah, and so that's just a little bit about me. So you've got a bit of a background where I'm from. And uh, uh, so today, what I would want to uh, talk to you about is uh, my story so far. Uh, the, my inspiration, so who inspired me uh, along the way. Uh, 365 Street Portraits Project, so that was one of my first projects that I did. Uh, short term projects that I've done, a few, and Chasing Dream, which is my current project that I'm concentrating on mostly. Uh, and then questions answered right at the end. Um, so, uh, my story so far. Um, so as I as I said, I, I moved to London 15 years ago. Uh, I've worked in different. Uh, I did loads of different jobs uh, uh, when I moved here. I couldn't speak a word of English, so it was uh, a little bit um, scary to, to move here and uh, find a job. But you know, managed and uh, my. Um, yeah, my, my jobs I did, um, uh, I worked in retails and wholesale and uh, coffee shops, restaurants, uh, but the latest job I did was working in email marketing, digital marketing, and um, that was till May last year. Uh, um, so how did my whole story start with photography? So um, about three years ago, uh, yeah, three years in May uh, this year, um, my husband and I and his parents we were going to America and I always used to take f uh, pictures with my iPhone and he said, why don't you just get a proper camera? Uh, we're going to some amazing places uh, in America and um, yeah, why don't you just take photos there? Uh, and I thought, you know, it's so expensive. I don't really know if I should get it. He said, oh no, no, just get it, get it. So I, I brought, brought the camera, I went to America and just uh, on the way there I read a book called Understanding Exposure because to me like digital camera was, I don't know what all these numbers mean, didn't know, I didn't have a clue. So um, I read this book which is amazing and whoever's asking, I always recommend this book to anyone who starts in photography just to learn the basics of how to use the camera and it's not really technical, it's kind of explaining you in the really basic ways of how to use a camera and how to understand the exposure, the ISO and aperture and um, uh, shutter speed. Um, it took me a while to kind of go like all these numbers together, but uh, it, it, you know, it, it worked eventually. And um, so yeah, so when I got back from, from the trip, um, I was looking through the photos um, and I realized that uh, I took a lot of photos of, uh, of people. Um, and then I must have googled something like um, people photography because I didn't I didn't know anything about photography, especially street photography, and probably street photography just popped up in the Google search. So I was um, um, reading a lot about it, and then after reading a lot about it, I thought in September it's time for me to go, and uh, I chose Shoreditch as my location, and. Um, I just went out with my camera and I just started taking loads of street shots. So I came back home with about 600 pictures and <laughs> loading everything. And I looked through and I, I remember I was literally buzzing like, oh my God, it was like the most amazing experience. Just like taking photos of people and then looking through them. And, and I said to my husband, I was like, do you know what? This is exactly what I want to do. But then I'm a Gemini, Gemini and I know that I'm usually that if I'm excited about something, it usually after six months max I'm done like I'm bored I'm moving on to something else but with this it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and I thought wow like, this is you know and then at work when I was sitting at my desk I couldn't concentrate on what I was doing all I was doing was just reading about street photography and trying to get involved and in going to different events and meeting people and you know and then um, luckily 
last year in May, I had been made redundant, and um, that was two years into my photography journey. Uh, and everyone said, you know, everyone, I just suck it off. Just don't look for another job. You, uh, you you'll find you'll find something like you just do photography full time. So that's how it started. Um, so that's uh, some of my first photos that I took. Originally, like when I first started, I was doing uh, all only black and white. Uh, so that's literally one of the first photos that I took on the first walk that I did in uh, Shoreditch. Um, this one is uh, one of my favourite candid portraits that I did early on uh, and then I think since then it started I w w worked on like a small project like people smoking because I it what was really good for me to 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 learn is just ha kind of have sequences like series of things like people in hats for example or people smoking or people doing one sort of thing or have something in common and that's what I applied and that that kind of gave me ideas for future projects which um which I do. So like this one, for example, was taken in Indonesia a couple of years ago. It was a girl, she was sitting on the, on the beach smoking and I thought that would be a good addition to the, to the smoking people. Uh, that one I uh, took in Paris uh, and when I went to Paris, usually I sh um, the first camera that I got was Canon 700D with a prime lens, a 30. Um, but when I went to Paris, I borrowed uh, a quite big lens. So when I took this photo, I was quite close, and this big, massive lens. So I literally went like this, and then he looked up, and I thought, oh my God, he's going to kill me. But I, I, lit I took the photo, and that's the look that I got. But after I took the photo, he smiled, and we actually exchanged, sort of like, we didn't talk, but it was kind of like, are you okay to take the photo? So it was really, really cool. So yeah, that's probably one of my favorites that I did early on. Uh, that's again another one I took in uh, Indonesia. Uh, I think it was in Bali. Just, just have a quick question. Sure. Do you, do you, uh, did you go to Paris, for example, just for this project, or uh, were you in Paris for another purpose? And it was um, a product? No, I just went to Paris with my friend. We just decided to go on a weekend uh, away. So it was a long weekend. And uh, yeah, wherever, like since, since I bought my camera, I pretty much take it with me everywhere I go. So for three years, I've pretty much had my camera in my bag all the time. So wherever I go, I, I take, yeah. But yeah, I, I did quite a few street shots in, in Paris. It was, uh, um, I kind of struggled a little bit in Paris. Um, I think London's more open and people are uh, like, don't mind being photographed uh, in Paris. Be more reserved, and um, there was few people not being happy with it. So I think London for street photography is definitely more. It's a friendlier place to shoot. Um, and this one, uh, so that one I took in uh, in Kyoto in Japan. Um, so it was raining. We we had really bad weather in Japan. It was just raining, 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 raining. And uh, yeah, and I saw this girl and she was uh, giving out leaflets and I just really loved her expression and I quickly took that photo and uh, yeah, and I actually, I've got only one picture that I've printed from all my work and that's the one and it's in a big frame in, in my living room. Um, I probably would change it now, but it's, it's still like one of the reminders of, um, of the early uh, stages. Um, so my inspiration, just to quick, quickly, I'll give you a few names who inspired me um, when, when I was researching about street photography. Um, so these are all the masters that I really look up to and have got their books. And um, so you probably heard about loads of them, like Henry Cartier Brisson, and, um, uh, who's basically the founder of street photography. Um, he's, um, he's, he's, he's French. Uh, Bruce Gilden, so he's doing a lot of um, sh uh, street portraits, so he's, um, I don't know if you haven't heard of him, check it out, his portraits are very uh, unique, very distinct, very kind of um, aggressive in a way, so he's, he's uh, going to people, um, he's going to really close to people and use flash, so the portraits are really very sharp and yeah. Um, and Steve McCarry, I think everyone knows him. Uh, so he's, uh, I absolutely, I've got his uh, portrait book. They're absolutely amazing. So he's, uh, he's amazing with, with portraiture. Uh, Diane Arbus, so she was an uh, American um, 
a photographer. I'm actually reading her biography now, which is really interesting, quite sad because she committed suicide in the end. Uh, but her, her, her work is amazing. She photographed really um, different sort of type of people, like dwarves or uh, disabled, and they, they quite uh, distinct um, characters that she was... Uh, she also did a lot of work in the circus. Um, uh, Joel Mayrovitz, uh, so he's, I absolutely love listening, if you ever get a chance, just listen to his um, YouTube chat, uh, YouTube videos, uh, his voice is so amazing, when he talks, it's, uh, it's really soothing, uh, I actually got a chance to see him, uh, see him uh, live once, uh, he uh, did a little, small talk um, in central London, so I was really excited to see him. Uh, and then Vivian Mayer, again, really interesting story behind uh, Vivian Mayer, if you haven't heard, uh, you, you can uh, check it out. Uh, she was a, a, a French nanny, she was living in America and she was taking loads of um, photography and she didn't tell anyone about it. And then uh, a few years ago someone bought a box of her negatives and they started printing and then they discovered that, you know, this woman took some amazing street photography but never told anyone uh, about it and um, uh, yeah now they uh, published her book so it's a really interesting story um, uh, and from the current photographers which some of them I'm close friends with now and uh, so Nicholas Gordon he's an amazing photographer uh, I found a lot of stuff about street photography on the street photography London blog and he's the owner of that um, and now we're really good friends, so we met through uh, internet and I think it's really interesting to... It's really good to find someone that you admire, that you can actually talk to, because all these masters, that's amazing, but they're so out of reach, you wouldn't be able to speak to them. So find someone like that you can speak to and they might be able to help you with stuff, and that's what I did. And uh, Valerie Jardine, so she's French, but she lives in Minneapolis. Uh, so she's a lovely, uh, lovely woman and uh, we did a couple of podcasts, she runs a podcast so we, she did a couple of interviews with me so she's, she's brilliant. Uh, Magnus Vier, he's uh, in Amsterdam, really, really nice guy, um, he actually, uh, he's writing a really cool blog and one thing that I uh, learned from him is at the early stage when I kind of just did street photography and didn't want to do anything else because I'm a street photographer, he said, listen, just do whatever you want to do. Like, don't, don't just be this, just be who you want to be. Like, who, whatever you want to photograph, just photograph. Don't just photograph one thing. And then, yeah, and that's brilliant because that's how I got to the point now that I actually love taking street portraiture and this is, you know, what I want to do. And, but if I did just street, candid street, I would never find it because I would just, you know. Um, Eric Kim, again, amazing um, photographer who's, uh, he's got like the best blog about street photography. Everything you need to know, it's literally there. Um, Peter Zalewski, um, he's a great uh, street portraiture photographer. He published a book recently and um, uh, yeah, so he's, he's a great, um, uh, great guy. Um, I'm going to actually meet him soon for a cup of coffee and talk photography and uh, uh, he invited me to one of his shoots as well so that would be interesting to go and, and see. Uh, and Doggy Wallace, um, he's a guy, he's, he's a Scottish guy, lives in, in East London and he's taking really cool stuff, like really, really good street uh, photography. Um, his first book was Shortage Wildlife and it's really interesting. So yeah, check, the, check him out if you're interested. And Jimmy Nelson, uh, he's, um, he's an amazing portrait photographer. So he's traveling around the world and uh, photographing different tribes um, and <coughs> um, yeah, <coughs> portraits of, of people uh, living in tribes and areas in, in different parts of the world. Um, so just quickly, uh, now to tell you about, am I t speaking too fast or no? All good? Okay. Because um, I've got quite a few things and I didn't know how much time I'm going to spend on each slide. But, um, so 365 Street Portraits Project. So that's the one, that's basically my first portraits, street portraits that I took. Um, and I thought I'm going to pass out literally when I approached this guy and I thought, oh my God, what am I doing? Why am I talking to some strangers in the street? And I, it was quite nerve wracking. 
But um, yeah, so I decided that I wanted to do 365 uh, project, which meant to take a photo a day. And I specifically wanted to do street portraiture. So that was my aim for a whole year. So I did that for about five months. So I took a portrait a day. Um, and that's some of them here. Uh, that was actually shot here in Shoreditch. Uh, Gustavo from Brazil. Um, that was shot in uh, King's Cross. Um, really like her hair and that, you know, really young girl but with grey hair, so that caught my eye. Uh, she looks amazing. Um, uh, she's from a uh, she's from Japan. That was in Kings Cross Station. I took you will see that I take quite a few portraits in Kings Cross. Amazing people there. Um, uh, that's again in Kings Cross. Bella. Her name was Bella. Uh, again, Kings Cross. Um, can't remember her name actually. I met so many people. Um, so yeah, I did, I did all of that for, for about five months, um, meeting people, that was in Hyde Park, um, lovely Japanese girl, I can't remember her name as well. Um, so yeah, so I did that and then in May, I, I was mentioned earlier, I was made redundant and uh, it was a bit of a stressful time because it was unfair dismissal and I had to just organise my life and then in three months I was getting married and it was just all coming together and I felt like it's really impractical for me to go on a street and take a portrait every day so I felt I'll, I'll just take a portrait whenever I can um, so I, I stopped doing the 365 project um, and then I got married and then we went on a two month honeymoon um, so again that wasn't really a great time for me to take a portrait every day because yeah it, it, I don't think my, my husband then would be happy <laughs> Um, uh, so that takes me nicely to the short term projects. Um, so before we um, before we set off to our honeymoon, we were going to different countries. I said to myself that I want to do a, a project in each country, and whatever that meet might be, I, I don't know. I didn't set anything. Um, you know, that's what I'm going to do here, or this is what I'm going to do here. It just kind of happened naturally um, as I as I as I went. Um, and the first one we, uh, well actually they, this one was before, uh, we went to Saint-Tropez before the wedding. So uh, when we went to the beach in Saint-Tropez, it was one of its kind. Like, it's very, I don't know if anyone went to Saint-Tropez, it's, it's, it's a beautiful beach, but you can send so much money there that I've never seen anything like it. So I thought, you know, there, there was this thing, distinct type of people that were coming down I mean, people were you know flying in helicopters to go to the beach and you know at the parking there was just Bentleys and you know it was just money 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 so when I was there sunbathing we were there only for three days I thought that uh, this is really interesting like I want to capture the whole vibe on the beach so what I did for two days just literally walk around and then uh, took some photos and so yeah this this is a small project that I did um, was published by Lens Culture, which was a nice surprise. It was really cool to see this uh, being published there because obviously they they quite yeah lots of inspiration there. So it was really nice surprise. So as you can see, loads of uh, loads of Russian people there. Quite I quite like this one because he was walking around with his reading book, and it was uh, yeah it was a funny one. Um, so that's just the whole series from Saint-Tropez. And then again, here you can see like, you know, people wearing shirts on the beach and having dogs, loads of dogs, um, reading papers, very glamorous, very tanned, orange-like. <laughs> um, not looking very happy here, this one, this lad. Um, yeah, and uh, so that's that's the, the project from Saint Tropez, uh, and then we went to Sri Lanka. So before sh we went to Sri Lanka, I knew exactly what part wanted we wanted to go. It was the um, uh, tea trails. Um, I didn't know that. It, I don't know if you know the name of the uh, tea Dilma. Uh, it's very popular in Poland, and I didn't even realize it's the tea trails for Dilma. 
So when I got there, I was really, even more so, was really, really happy. Um, but yeah, before Sri Lanka as well, I knew I wanted to go to, to the school. I wanted to take some photos in the school. I don't know why, I just thought, oh, maybe like, you know. So I did, uh, did uh, wake up in the morning one day and we walked into the town um, and I uh, got to the school, quite a big school. And I spoke to uh, a headmaster and it was really actually funny because I got there and uh, they said, oh, headmaster's coming soon. And then I walked into the room and he asked me to sit down and I thought, oh my God, I felt like I'm in trouble. So he was just there slowly doing, you know, putting his jacket on and doing his things. And then he sat down and he said, right, how can I help you? And then, so I asked whether I can take photos uh, at the school. But then because I wasn't prepared, and that's the lesson learned, if I really wanted to do it, I should have come prepared with some sort of papers or something that like, this is what I wanted to do. But because I didn't have anything, he said, I won't be able to take any photographs. However, he's going to organize a teacher to take me around to the school, which is really, really cool because, uh, yeah, it was just something like different, like usually what I like to do when I go uh, on any trips, just do something that is not like that tourists wouldn't do. So that was quite cool, like, you know, to get out of my way and come out from a lovely hotel and go to local school. So this, these are the school kids on the way to to school. I say school a lot, and like, um, uh, and that's the girls. Um, so that was a bit cheeky, so I had my small uh, Fuji film camera, so I turned it on silent and I took some photos when we were in. So that's, that's, a, that's a photo, that's a secret photo that I took. Uh, and this one as well. Here I got told off uh, by the teacher, said don't take photos. Uh, but these are, yeah, um, can't really see anything, it's not in the class. Uh, here the kids were praying, so you, well, there, there is two groups, so uh, one group of kids were Muslim and one group of kids were Catholic and they had two prayers in the morning which I found was really really sweet and uh, they didn't divide it, and, you know, they did all together so it was really good to see um, that they, you know, do things together. Um, and that's in, uh, that's the ladies who picked the tea in Dilma uh, tea trails uh, so all the tea is picked, hand-picked um, by those ladies and um, yeah, so we, were, we went to a tea factory for a tour, um, which was really, really nice um, and that's the tea trails, it's just absolutely stunning, I loved it there, just fell in love with the whole area, people were so nice, beautiful scenery, absolutely loved it. Um, uh, yeah, this portrait is one of my favourites from the whole trip. Um, really like the way she looked into the camera and feeling obviously comfortable and not embarrassed so I quite quite like her expression um, and that's in the tea factory um, so that's uh, that's Sri Lanka I think that's the last one uh, and then we went to so that's friends of ours and that was taken in uh, Fiji uh, so we went to Fiji it was kind of a detour because we were supposed to go to Australia but because with all the wedding all of stuff happening we completely forgot to apply for a visa so when we were sitting in Sri Lanka having so much fun three days before we were supposed to fly to Australia someone asked us so you did you you've, you had to get a visa to Australia and we looked at each other like oh crap yeah <laughs> so we quickly applied my husband got a visa straight away I didn't so we had to change our plans and then we flew to New Zealand a bit earlier and we stayed there for three weeks instead of two and then because we wanted to go to Australia because of the weather we thought we wanted to do some summer trip as well and the closest from New Zealand was Fiji so when we got to Fiji, beautiful islands, stunning scenery, everything awesome, like everything was awesome but then I was lacking, I didn't know like oh god there is nothing that I can really photograph that I mean there is that beautiful beaches and everything but I wanted to do something you know something else I wanted to create uh, a small project and literally the day before we were, we were leaving uh, I went to the room uh, to pick up something and there was a cleaner and uh, she was so lovely we started uh, talking and I said to her that you know tomorrow's our last day can she recommend any place that we can go outside of the town like maybe like a village or something and she said oh it's such a shame because I'm from a really small village you could have gone to school there 
and I had school and she said yeah you could take pictures then I thought what like I thought oh my god like how could I miss this but luckily she said I can organize something for you so someone at the reception her husband uh, was working as a taxi driver and he is he was from that village as well so he came pick us up and then he took us to the school and to the village and it was an amazing experience all these kids were just so lovely and all of them wanted to be photographed and um yeah it was just an amazing experience and like these two hours that i've spent in the school with everyone and talking to the teacher it was like literally the best that like, memory from from fiji and uh, doing doing this then what i did as well i printed all these photos and i posted it to them so they they said they're going to put it on the wall so that's amazing because they obviously they don't have you know cameras like we do and just to have photos like this in this school uh, they were they were really happy um so yeah loads of kids they walk to school bare feet and um, some kids have uniforms, some kids don't. Uh, also the uh, call in Fiji isn't compulsory so you don't, kids don't have to go to school so only, only kids that families have money to, to send them to school they do uh, and also what I found is um, that there is um, a segregation so that's why when in Sri Lanka you had Catholics and Muslims together in one school that was amazing whether in, in Fiji uh, there was segregation between the uh, Fijians and India Fijians so they they don't hang out together uh, so it's it's a big segregation and there are separate schools for for those kids um, and that's she's she is so lovely she's actually the daughter of the teacher uh, and yeah, she's naturally blonde. I don't know why she's blonde and why how how did that happen? So it's not, yeah. Uh, and she had sort of you can't see on the picture, but she had like greenish eyes. She's a beautiful girl. Uh, but this one was my favorite. Yeah, I've got a few photos of her. She she was very keen to uh, to be photographed. Um, yeah. They, they had fun with the camera and I did say like just you know because they, they, they it was chaos when I got their chaos so the teacher said listen you have to you know you have to just just we need to do the lesson so don't mind that they, pretend that, that she's not here but then they were like this and looking at the camera like that was so funny uh, really cute and that's all of them and the teachers there she was lovely as well I took a few portraits of her and um, sent it to her um, and then the next one, it was Guardians of Africa. So that was in South Africa. Uh, that was the last place to visit. And um, you probably know South Africa is quite dangerous and um, I wouldn't even dare to go anywhere with my camera without any supervision. So because obviously South Africa is like so amazing, you can obviously go to loads of parts without you know guards or anything, but going to the places where I wanted to photograph it it just wasn't possible uh, so I was, uh, we were in Cape Town for a week and then we went to the um, uh, wine region Franschtuk and Stellenbosch and when we were driving around I saw this nice town not far from uh, from Franschtuk and uh, we had the taxi driver there and what, what turned out uh, he was also um, a security guard with a permission for a gun so he actually it's it's crazy that honestly like the stories i've heard it's, it's just insane so it kind of like a light bulb moment for me i thought oh like he's a taxi driver he's from here he's south african he can speak afrikaans uh he's he's a you know licensed uh uh, bouncer, so I thought, security guard, so I thought I'm going to ask him, so I asked him, I said, hey, listen, can I go to this place, like, would you come with me? And he said, yes, of course, what time do you want me to pick you up tomorrow? And I thought, yes, amazing. So what we did, he picked us up and we went to the place called Blanquadoc. Uh it's just called a community, and um, what we did, we drove around um, the area, and... Um, he, what he was saying, like, I'll come out, I'll speak to the people in Afrikaans and I'll ask them whether it's okay to take a photo and then you can come out. So that's what we did. Uh, this is a boy that were running uh, um, 
next to the car when we were driving away, so I took a photo of him, it was really cute. Uh, that's him and his friends, all bare feet, uh, running around, really lovely boys. Um, so yeah, so what, while we were doing this, um, we uh, we obviously looked suspicious because we were in a black car with tinted windows and we are in obviously where we shouldn't be. And then towards the end, um, actually this photo, so we were taking photos of, of uh, this lady at the first uh, image that I showed and then we were going to go into the car and this guy came over and started talking in Afrikaans and he was quite aggressive in a way and then he said in Afrikaans to, to uh, uh, the taxi driver said that he wanted to be photographed as well so we did that and then he took he after the photo I took he took his jacket off and then uh, he had a tattoo 27 and then what it means uh, we found out from JJ <coughs> after like I took this photo and he was happy I got in the car and then JJ was talking to him for a bit and I could see that he's getting a little bit angry and then JJ gave him some money and then got in a car and then we drove off and then he told me like who this guy is so he saw the tattoo 27 which means uh, he is from the most dangerous gang in uh, prison in South Africa and then when he was being angry outside I didn't see but he had the knife uh, in in under his uh, trousers so that's how crazy it gets so like you can imagine like you never you can't if i was there on my own i wouldn't stand a chance like everything would be stolen from me not saying i would be killed but i wouldn't come back with any pictures or camera or nothing um so yeah that was that was kind of like whoa this is really uh, some serious stuff um and yeah, so this girl, uh, she, so JJ told us that uh, when the girls wear curl, curl, curls, uh, it's a sort of um, status of uh, like wealthy family. So when the girls walking around a town with curls, it means they, they're from sort of like well, wealthier family in town. Um, and then that's, yeah, that's another portrait that I took. And I think they were, I don't know what it is, but it's to um, protect the skin from sand. I'm not sure what, what they put on though. Um, right, okay, so that's all like short term projects from, from the trip. Uh, I also did last year, uh, I was finding happiness at Glastonbury, uh, very muddy Glastonbury. <laughs> Uh, we did find it in the end, the happiness. Uh, but yeah, so last year went to Glastonbury. That, that was my second time, and um, I went there with about 15, 15 of, of our friends. Uh, it was a lot of fun, despite the mud, which was uh, ridiculous. I've never seen anything like it. Um, and so I took uh, my cameras and um, just took loads of photos. Um, when we got back, edited the photos posted the blog uh, on my website and uh, in July I think and then last year in December I got a phone call uh, and um, and the phone call was uh, it was on Saturday before Christmas I think it was fixing Christmas lights and uh, it was on the phone I was like hello it's John from Glastonbury and I was thinking who the hell is John from Glastonbury like <laughs> have I taken a photo of some John and he found he was saying that he found a word like my Staff online, I thought I don't really know. So he wasn't really explaining himself properly. And then when he said, Oh, you know, I've worked with a lot of photographers and your stuff's really amazing, and are you coming next year? And I thought, God, is this like John from Glastonbury? Like, and then I said, Well, we can't, we, I'm not coming because we tried to get tickets and none of like we didn't get the tickets. So he said, Well, we need to get you in. Um, and I thought, Oh my God, like this is like John from Glastonbury. And then he gave me his email address. And he said, can you send us some of your high uh, resolution images because we really like them and we would like to print the big sizes and put it up in the uh, offices. And we want to also use those images for the changing rooms for all the acts where, when they you know, get ready to go on the stage. So I did that and then, so they picked this one. They completely obsessed with this photo. It has been printed everywhere. And I went to Glastonbury in March to meet the whole team and they were so happy to show me this. It was metre and a half wide and metre long and it's there and then alongside with 
for Ada, but they obsessed with this one. Uh, and uh, I met Emily uh, Evies and Michael Evies, so they, the organizers of the, well, the owners of Glastonbury, basically, that's how, that's how it started. And Emily told me that they, she sent this to Adele and her husband as well, and they loved it. And I thought, this is just ridiculous. First of all, that I'm here in like, meeting the whole team and then it was just such a surreal moment I, I got a bit emotional when I got there because I love Glastonbury and just to hear lovely you know stories and knowing that they love my work it was amazing um, uh, this photo was actually published now in Lufthansa magazine so they contacted me as well and they wanted to publish that one so if you fly Lufthansa this month you might be able to see that one in the magazine um, so yeah, that's a few shots um, from Glastonbury, uh, that was in the pyramid stage, we had a lovely time there, it was raining and then beautiful rainbow, um, here people are like, oh it doesn't look hurt because it, it looks like her face burning but it was quite far, it's just the perspective. Um, and I did a few portraits there as well for, for the project, for the 365. Um, so yeah, so Glastonbury, I'm going there next week, this time I'll be driving, so I'm looking forward to it, the weather looks amazing, and uh, I'll be in hopefully better area, hospitality areas, get uh, passes for the front stages, and uh, I'm so excited, really, really happy, uh, so hopefully I'll meet quite a few people, I don't know. <laughs> Um, and now it's coming to Chasing Dreams, so that's my project that I'm working on. It's kind of uh, progressed from 365 to Chasing Dreams. So when we got back from a trip last year, I thought, okay, I really want to carry on with taking street portraiture, I really like it. Um, I also invested money in uh, new equipment, so I bought new camera, new lenses. I thought, okay, if I'm doing this, I'm going to do this properly, and I had some money from the redundancy. So I thought, you know, instead of spending money, I would just, you know, invest in, in my equipment. And um, when I was sort of talking to people on the street, I thought, okay, what is... Like, I always knew that my dream would be to publish a book with, uh, with the portraits that I've been taking. So that kind of gave me an idea I can ask people that I photograph what uh, daydreams are, so I've got a bit of a context of context to the people that I photograph. Um, so rather than just having a portrait and the name, then I can give a little bit of a sort of, sort of small story to to the person I'm photographing, and that's how chasing dreams uh, happened. And uh, yeah, since then uh, it's it's been an amazing journey. I've met. It's, so many incredible people with beautiful dreams and funny dreams and and um, yeah funny emotional very personal so um, yeah uh, can you all read the can you all read it is it too small um, so yeah um, I, I've been I've been doing this now this year I'm completely dedicated to it um, and it took me this long to find out that this is what I want to do, like street portraiture is not even, yeah, like portraiture is, is definitely the way for me I want to go um, and I'll also photograph everything because to me photography is, you know, you, you shouldn't really be just that one type of photographer, right, you, you, you kind of need to spread your wings and do what, you know, what you, what you've want to photograph like I don't I don't want to go on a trip and just photograph people I want to go on a trip and take a beautiful landscape and buildings and you know some street as well and you know when I go to you know I do events so I can apply the street photography on Natty that's uh, yeah he's, he's amazing he's uh, I had a really bad day actually that day and I was walking around and I didn't ask anyone and then I met him and his friend in Spitterfields Market and they were just so lovely and they, after talking to them, they were dancing for me and singing and I got home and I thought, wow, how amazing that these two strangers that I just met, they could lift my spirits so much. 
So yeah, that's what, that's the reasons why I love this project as well because sometimes you don't want to speak to someone or you have a bad day and then you just speak to someone and you just wow you're so nice like so you meet so many nice people um that they really like make me make me happier when I get home and every time I get home it's like right where have I gone and you know I kind of know from flicking through the pictures that I have taken um which one I'm going to choose so even though I take like 15 20 shots of uh each portrait I know exactly which one and then I edit and yeah it's 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 a great great project really enjoy it so this uh, Vincenzo so um his dream is bless him um so um I met Vincenzo in Hyde Park and he was outside of Hyde Park uh and I walked past him and I thought oh shall I take the photo or shall I not and I kept walking further away and I thought actually I don't know and I turned around and I thought Oh, he's gone now. Mm. Oh God! Oh no! But something was kind of, you know, like a string, like pulling me towards him. So I turned around and I walked, and he was at the bus stop. And I thought, oh, thank God! And then we started talking, and uh, he was smoking a cigarette, and he was telling me he's this Italian businessman, and blah blah blah. And uh, it was a bit windy and cold, and he said, "What are you doing now? Do you want to go for a cup of coffee?" I thought, okay. So we went to this small cafe, Italian cafe in Piccadilly, and we had a coffee. And he was just such a lovely gentleman. I don't know if he was hitting me because he's looking for a wife, but <laughs> <laughs> it was unsuccessful. Yeah, he's uh, yeah. So that was really um, going and Alicia. So that was in Covent Garden. Uh, she was walking with her boyfriend, and yes, yeah, so I took a photo of her and her boyfriend. And when I showed it to my husband, the boyfriend oh, I should have included that here. Uh, my boyfriend, my my husband looked at the photo and thought, "Oh my God, where are his ears?" And like couldn't see his ears because he was like this, and it's really strange. It's just the face. So I really like I really like that portrait. Yeah, I didn't include that in the presentation. Um, yeah, this one was uh, taken at the classic cabinet sale uh, in Kings Cross. They do uh, the event twice a year. So there's quite a few interesting people wearing vintage clothes and it's a good opportunity to take some portraits there. Uh, and actually this gave me um, an idea of another project that I want to do, which is um, photograph people wearing vintage clothes, like 50s and 60s. So I'm planning a trip to Margate with a publisher, um, who, with a guy who works for, um, for a publisher because he likes the idea so he said, let's go to Margate and maybe something will come out of it. So that's the sort of project I told him about. He likes the idea and he kind of wants to work on it together. Um, uh, so that's that. And then, yeah, that was again uh, at the Classic Carpet Sale. Uh, yeah, I had to ask her like three or four times about her name because she said Tiger Lee, you know, from so I thought, Right, is that her name? Like you know, but the, obviously I think maybe her name is just Lily, and then she added Tiger Lily. I don't know, uh, but yeah, really, really lovely girl, beautiful face, and I loved her bow. Um, and that's uh, Jamie. That was uh, he's a student at say, Saint Martin's, um, and that's James. Uh, he's a doorman in one of the nice hotels in Piccadilly, uh, Piccadilly Circus. So I walked past him and his eyes just caught my eye and I thought, wow, like his eyes are amazing. And then, I don't know, something was, should I go, should I nod? Sometimes, sometimes I straight away go to people and talk to them and sometimes it takes me a while to kind of, I need to talk myself through it. And I was like, go, you should go, you should go, you regret it, you regret it. And then I go and then, and he turned out to be an amazing guy and we took a few, few shots there and, um, yeah, and I'm really glad I did because uh, it turned out to be a, a, a nice portrait. Uh, and that's Anthony, he's a musician, I met him in Shoreditch. Um, very nice guy as well. Uh, I always tend to hack people after we take photos. Everyone seems so comfortable at the end that we always, I was like, the show, yeah. And then we just hug, so yeah, I had a hug with Anthony as well. Um, Eva, so that was in uh, Soho. Uh, she was on a day trip with her mum in London, so her dream is to live in London one day. Um, and that's it. So uh, if you would like to see more of my work, that's my website. Uh, on Instagram, I'm stories by Ivona. Twitter, Ivona Pinkovic. And if you would like to send me an email or anything, please do. If you've got any questions, like you might forget to ask today, 
uh, you can send me an email. Uh, and yeah, so questions? <coughs> Okay, first of all, thank you. Thank you very much. What we really find, I mean, absolutely amazing is your uh, incredible enthusiasm for life, I think. And oh, I think that's, that's really what, it, what is coming through in all those pictures. And I think that's, that's also, I mean, this is so incredibly positive, I think, really, you know, looking at those images. I think that's that's also maybe what you kind of radiate and also what, what maybe reflects on other people. Uh, super, really, really fantastic, I think. Thank you very much. The, um, um, I've got a question. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, I've got two questions, in fact. The one question is, um, what's going to be your next step? So you're working on this project. Is it going to be a book project, yes. maybe? Do you have a publisher? I don't know. That could go into Oxen Press or something like this, I think. That's ba so basically, I that's my dream. My dream is to publish a book with all these portraits. So I'm working... I'm literally, this is my aim, and whether it's going to take, the more I, the portrait, the more portraits I've got, the the less I think I've got. I don't, I don't know, it doesn't, shouldn't work that, this way, but it, it does, like, um, so I don't know, I don't have the time frame for a book, and I like to go to, like, Hoxton Mini Press, I kind of, I, I know people there, uh, so I go to every book launch, um, I, they know, they know me there, um, I buy all of their books, so I kind of like try to get, I would love to publish with them, like Coxton Mini Press is the sort of things that they publish and that would be just amazing. Um, so who knows, I don't know, they might say, oh we've already got the portrait book uh, by Peter Zalewski, who published with Hoxton Mini Press, and they might say, you know, we already have something similar, uh, so then I don't know, it could be self-published i don't know it's but definitely a book i can imagine this beautiful coffee table book positive that's exactly what i want a lot because what i want to sort of show with my work is the positivity a lot of you've got amazing photojournalists and they go to this places where there's so much sadness and you know we need all of that and you know we need to see those people suffering and how we can help them but my aim in my photography is to show positivity and go to places where happy things are happening and i think i don't know if there is many photographers there like that probably there is maybe i don't know much about them but that's basically my aim i want to be that positive photographer and talk about you know, not because I want to neglect the, the bad stuff that are happening in the world, but, you know, you, 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 you turn the TV on and it's just bad news all the time. You look everywhere and it's just bad news and no one talks about the good things, no one talks about the positive things and there are so many out there and I think our brains are just fed with all this negativity all the time that, you know, you, you, you need to, that's what I want to sort of do, sorry. <laughs> Did that answer your question? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised really that everybody wants, wants to hug you really after the phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, super really. The, uh, you should go to R, you know, if you are looking for a book, a book uh, you know, publishing contract, this is where all the, the book deals are being done basically. Yeah? And, you know, try to get a few appointments in R. And I heard that people kind of, you know, even if you don't manage to get an appointment with the right, let's say, a reviewer, they tend to uh, hand you over to the right people, basically. Right. Okay. They, they tend to make a phone call if they see something. And I mean, this would be absolutely, I'm, I'm sure that that would have quite an impact, I think, yeah. Um, and uh, I've got another question, mm -hmm. a more, slightly more technical question about the, about the uh, Chasing Dreams project. Mm -hmm. um, because they, they're all incredibly beautiful. And first, you look at those portraits and you go like, wow, that's, that's a great portrait. And then you start to realize, oh, wow, but it's also, let's say, like the, the background communicates perfectly, let's say, like with the color of the top, etc. Do you, um, do you plan this a lot when you see this, 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 let's say, like this, um, 
Italian gentleman, basically. He's just standing in front of this perfect wall, basically. Yeah. yeah? And the light is just great. I've got a question about the lighting and the and the background here. Yeah. Do you do anything? Do you pay particular attention to the lighting? Because it just looks great. And how about the backgrounds? The I can see really often you've got either a central perspective, so you ask people to stand kind of in the middle of the road, yeah. like this, and then you work with the shadow depth of the field, or they just stand in front of the perfect background basically. Yeah. How do you deal with it? The universe gives me the perfect background, like literally, <laughs> honestly, because it's so hap it happens so quickly, because you're on a street and I don't look for the background, I don't look for a place, I look for people, so where I look, I look at faces, I, I scan, and I see, okay, that person, and then I pick the person, and then I look around, then I look around, like, okay, where can I position this person? So that's how it happens. And then likely, like with the, the gentleman, the Italian gentleman, so they are really, like, so what happened with that is that I took a few portraits with him in two different, so first was on this side, so it was like trees behind, then it was like a pavement, and then we started talking. And then he was rolling his cigarette and we were chatting, chatting, chatting. And then he kind of moved to the back of the back, uh, the, the back of the bus stop. And I looked and I thought, oh my God, this is perfect. And then I thought, I said, Vincento, one more. So, oh, and then he's like, with the cigarette, oh, come on. And then, and that was it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sometimes you, you kind of, like, like I take a portrait, talk to people more, and then I'll see something change or, you know, see different maybe background. And then I persuade people to maybe do two couple of more shots. And um, so, yeah, it's really, and the sort of the middle, the streets, it's so funny because do you remember the first uh, photo I showed this 365 mm -hmm. uh, from Shoreditch? Uh, it was Gustavo. Um, I'm not sure if I. I'm sure right at the beginning. Sorry. So basically, this this photo. Oh, there it is. Um, this one. Mm -hmm. So I took this in Shoreditch and then I posted it on Instagram and someone uh, commented, oh, very Peter Zalewski. I thought, who, I don't know who Peter Zalewski is. So I went on, on his Instagram, and basically Peter Zalewski, that's his style. So I didn't purposely steal it, I just literally did it, and then someone compared this photo with the style of Peter Zalewski, which, so he does that. So when you look, his book is amazing, by the way, like his portraits are stunning. So he does all of the shots in Soho, in like the, the same sort of streets, and he positions his subjects like this. Um, so yeah, sometimes I, I quite just, I, I don't actually want to do this way because it's his signature style and I don't want my portraits to look like him, so I don't want to do it very often, but when I don't have clear background or against the wall or something, then I'll use that sort of perspective, yeah. Do you use any 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 type of lighting or is it all? No, I get ambient? this question all the time, like mm -hmm. on Instagram. People ask me, what flash do you use? Do you use any like, reflectors? N nothing. Like literally nothing. All I do is just the camera. And then what I tend to do is I try to, so I always shoot in either cloudy days. And I always, and if it's, it's sunny, then I'll take the subjects to the uh, shadows, so shades, sorry. So I don't have any um, harsh light on, on faces. Yeah. Was you doing formal training or were you just taught yourself? Taught myself, mm. yes. Yeah. But that's the thing, I, and I know that um, you, if you read a lot about photography, you, you'll get people saying, you know, you'll learn when you shoot, just shoot, 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 and that, that really is the truth. Mm. And you know, I, I always have the camera on me, always, always. So since I bought it, it's just like addiction. And I think my blessing was that I started in street photography because you 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 will want to take your camera with you all the time because you don't know what you're gonna miss. So your camera is with you all the time. And then what what street photography taught me is that I can imply what I've learned through street photography in weddings, events in you know like even you know talking to people at you know different places it's it's just taught me so much street photography because you see like i do weddings sometimes like if someone recommends me i'll go and do a wedding so so i'm able to kind of spot those quick moments that happens because i've learned them how to do it on the street 
So I, people will look at it and say, oh my God, how did, you, how did you even manage to capture this? And I said, because I've learned, like I've, I've trained my eye uh, by doing street photography. So even if you don't want to be a street photographer, try it because you see, see, you see stuff so differently. Yeah. Do you spend a lot of time with your uh, sitters? Uh, um, half an hour, 15 minutes, how long? Uh, with, with the we, with that, yeah, with the, yeah, with the uh, dreams. It really depends, but usually I would say it would be between 15 to 20 minutes. Um, sometimes longer, like, you know, with Vincento went for a cup of coffee, so I don't know how. <laughs> um, but yeah, usually 15 to 20 minutes. And I, to your surprise, people are so happy to talk and have a chat and they're so flattered that you ask them to take a photo and uh, yeah, they're happy to talk and you'll be surprised how many things they tell you because you're stranger and they will share, share everything. And the other question would be uh, related to, the <clears throat> to what they say to you uh, regarding their dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, I found very interesting what they say and actually I would suggest to, um, you know, to, to highlight what they say together with the pictures. Uh, when do you ask them about the dreams? Do you ask before taking the picture, after taking the picture? Does their answer uh, affect the sort of the mood of the picture in a way? It's a good question because what I do, I introduce myself, I'll say you know who I am and what I do and what this whole project is about and you know I say that I, I would love to photograph you and I also ask people what their dreams are. And then they say, oh, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. So then we kind of talk, and then I do the sort of talk before, like sh straight away going into taking photo. Then I ask where they're going, and whether they're in rush, and how much time do they have, and what do they do, and what do they do in the area, and, you know, just have the quick chat with them so they, you're not straight away taking photos, so they're kind of feeling at ease. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then I tell them, right, so I... I want you to think about your dream because I'm going to ask you after I take a photo. So when I take the photo, they think about the dream. So I capture that and then, because sometimes people will feel uh, uncomfortable in front of camera, but if you gave them a task, they like thinking, so they're not concentrating about, you know, being photographed, so they're thinking about the dream. And then I ask them about the dream. Yeah. And then also what I do, I take uh, all the uh, details from them, all the email addresses. And then I follow up with the email, I send them the, um, a copy of the image and, and then I ask them again to confirm the dream that they said. So sometimes they change it, but most, most of the times it's the same, yeah. It's just because what I want to do, I don't want to just put it in my words, I want to have as much, as much from them as possible to have it in the caption, so it's in their words rather than mine. Do you get them to sign a model release form? No. no. Because I'm not I'm not <coughs> using these photos for any marketing purposes and you know I can I can sell prints, I can publish a book, you know, I can do all of these things. Um, but if they will found their face in next L'Oreal advert then yes, I will be in trouble. Yeah. Do you do much photo editing? No, not much actually, uh, because I've learned like I know what I like now, so it's pretty quick. I know, da, 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 da. so I don't really spend much time on editing. Yeah, I used to obviously like faffing about and trying to find, but you know, it's uh, it's easier now. And when you go for uh, the portraits project, do you usually carry with you a reflex or a, a, a little camera that you use? Uh, in uh, street photography? No, I, u I use my uh, Sony camera. So I've got Sony A7R 2 and uh, 50 um, lens, Sony lens. So that's the ones I'm using. Okay. So it's quite, it's quite chunky. Because it's funny with Sony cameras. You get a small body, but then they give you massive 50 mil lens. Mm -hmm. And then I've tried to use a uh, Canon lens with the adapter, but it's even bigger and heavier, and it didn't work. The old fo fo focusing was horrible. So yeah, um, so I've got this only one. And when did you understand that this is... To, um, ha, um, it was uh, difficult to, to have the switch from your normal job to, to, the, to be a photographer? Uh, it sort of was easy because I didn't really have much choice. <laughs> I lost my job. Okay. Uh, so it was kind of decision was made sort of for me. Um, 
to be uh, to be perfectly honest, if I was if I wasn't made redundant, I think I would struggle to to leave my job because you get so comfortable with steady income every month and I even the other day I said to my husband I said you know what when will it like, be the day where I won't be like we're gonna get paid here and then for this one I'm gonna get, and I just don't know what I'm gonna earn every month because the sort of jobs like if you're a wed just wedding photographer you book your weddings for next year so you know what you're gonna earn so you, you're fine and then you might lose a wedding here or there if something bad happens um, uh, or you might gain, right? But with my type of photography, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to earn this month. I don't know what I'm going to earn next month. So it is a bit tough, uh, but I think it's worth it. I mean, even sitting here with you guys here today, like it's just so amazing because I never thought, I mean, last year you would say, oh, you're going to be like, you know, I would never think that. That's, or, you know, I remember when we got back from Glastonbury and I showed the gallery with my photos to my group of friends that I was with and they said, oh my God, Ivana, this is amazing, like you should be the official photographer. I was laughing at them like, official photographer for Glastonbury, are you kidding me? And then six months later, I got a phone call and now I'm going and I met everyone and it's just mind blowing. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't change it. It's, it's, yeah, it's tough, but I said that earlier that if you've got love and passion for what you want to do, you got actually you're gonna to have to have it because if you don't have the love or passion for what you want to do, you you'll quit really quickly, you know. Because a lot of people think it's so good to be self-employed and work for yourself, but they don't think about the things that come with it. That it is tough, you know. So you, if you don't love it and if you don't have real passion for it, then how are you gonna last? Yeah. Mm. <coughs> and when you travel, do you always ask uh, for permission, or do you just approach it? Uh, like, well, the country because no, like all the stuff that I showed you. So obviously, like the school that was with permission. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it depends. Like the the tea um, tea trails with all the ladies that that was with permission. So I wouldn't ask, like, I just take photos and I know that they're happy to be photographed. No one's kind of saying you, you can't do it. Um, but pretty, like when I started uh, the photography, like street photography, then yeah, it was just candid. So I, did, I wouldn't ask for, for permission. And you know what, that's, that's awesome. And then I, th I think after a while I started feeling a bit, it's not really my sort of thing. I f I f after a while, I started feeling a bit guilty, you know, stealing some photos, like catching. It's it's don't get me wrong. I like the whole thrill about oh, you know I've got this shot, it's amazing. But then I thought, hmm, you know, what if someone took a photo of me? Would I like it? And a lot of street photographers are very rude and they don't really. They argue, and if someone says, "Listen, I'm not happy that you took a photo," they argue about I can and. You know, it's public space. I know, but I don't want to follow it. And they still, like, you know, they they won't delete the photo and they think they write. And, you know, if someone asks me to delete the photo, I'll delete straight away because it's not worth it, you know. And you've got to respect people on the street, whether it's a public place or not, you know. Yeah. Any more questions? Um, you mentioned that you, um, that Lufthansa used one of your photos, yes. is that something where you approached them or they approached you? They approached me, okay. so basically they did this article, um, uh, they asked different uh, artists what their favourite festivals uh, are and, oh my god I don't know, who she is. she's some young girl, she's a singer, I'm too old to know, she's, uh, do something, do lump, I don't know. Do you leave her? There you go. Oh, that's the one. <laughs> so she said her favourite festival is uh, Glastonbury. So they obviously must have searched for images <coughs> online um, from Glastonbury and they saw my, my work. Yeah, and they contacted me. Good, anyone else? I'd like to ask about social media. Do you use, I mean, I've seen your uh, Instagram feed. Do you use any other social media? And, uh, um, no. No, I just oh, Instagram. I t like I've got automated stuff from Instagram to Twitter, but I never got a group of Twitter. I think it's just 
too faffing. I, I don't like it. It's too much faff. With Instagram, is I've I've built a great. Um, I think I like Instagram the most is because uh, I've I've built really great communities there. So it feels like I've got friends on Instagram, if that makes sense. Yeah. So people will, you know, come in and it's it's like a small family. So I prefer that. And Twitter is more sort of business based, and you know, it's it's more business like. Um, and Facebook, I tried that, uh, like set up the Facebook page. Can't be bothered with that. It's just so you you concentrate on just on one, I think, uh, rather than on three different ones. And it's so much time. It's time consuming. Where are you gonna do all the other stuff when you need to just comment back and like back and retweet and thank you for retweet and then it's just <laughs> too much. <laughs> and do you get inspired by other photographers on Instagram as well? Uh, yes, I do actually. Um, the whole portrait project happened. Uh, because I met this um, photographer, his name is Benjamin, and he was doing street portraits and I really loved his stuff and I thought, oh, I'll do some street portraits. So he knows he inspired me to the whole 365 project. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, there is loads. I mean, um, another photographer that I met, um, Alan, Alan uh, Chandler and his girlfriend, Emily Garthwaite. Oh my god, this stuff is just incredible, like really, really good. Uh, the street photographers and um, Alan is more black and white, his portraits are amazing. Um, so yeah, they feed are uh, just stunning. Uh, Alan also, uh, um, uh, he's a co-founder on, on uh, Street um, Photography International. Um, so it's a big community, about 250,000 followers on Instagram. Um, he's a lovely guy, we, we met a few times and uh, yeah, his work's outstanding. Mm. Yeah. He, he was here, like, I think he was the first LLP speaker, talker. Alan? Alan, yes. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, amazing. Uh, I don't know, when, when we started, like, when we started about a year ago. See, I had small community, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. Small yeah, world. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, his stuff's amazing. I remember we, because he sort of started at the same time as me, and then he just went like, like a rocket. I thought, oh my God, what's happening? So yeah, I always admire his work, and uh, he's done loads of work for The Independent. I think that's what helped him to build his uh, following base, and then uh, there was a bit of a, yeah, he was also a member of the London, uh, Street Photography London, but that, um, they stopped doing it, so he, with the other members, they created the Street Photography International. And there was a bit of a drama going on there, <laughs> behind the scenes, but yeah, they've done really well. Good then, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You.